In this video, we're going to continue our series on using JavaScript in the Rails application. So, <clears throat> where we left off is we we have this uh, application where I want to be able to do things like, uh, well, uh, render at, uh, various parts of the page without having to do queries to the server or have, without having to um, send uh, messages to the server that then um, send the uh, the HTML back. I want to do everything in the ser in, sorry in the client <clears throat> with JavaScript, and I want to use some Bootstrap and whatnot. So in order to do this, there's a couple of things that need to happen. Um, first of all, we need to make a modification to our JavaScript application.js file. It's contained in the JavaScript directory and the assets directory under app. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add basically a command that will allow us to include a JavaScript file that we're going to create. I'm going to do that right here in the JavaScript directory, myjs.js. And then we're going to use this to make modifications uh, to, to code that's going to be run <coughs> uh, when the application is loaded. So the first thing that I'm going to try here is I'm going to make a modification to our page run at HTML. And you remember that we were using IDs to, <clears throat> uh, uh, to identify, basically uniquely name various tags within our document. And so I'm going to do that here and create a tag for um, t body, I'm going to add this annotation of ID equals experience list. So that's the name. That's the <clears throat> unique name that I'm giving to this part of the the document. So let's actually do something with this. Actually, make sure to save it, <clears throat> and we'll re-render the page and open up the JavaScript console. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for that tag. So document dot get element by ID. And that's what I call the experience list. And what this has done is given me the entire table, which is great. I mean, I've been able to specifically identify the table or at least this part of the table, um, so that I can do manipulations on it. So you'll see here that each of the rows is represented by uh, this block of code that's a tr tag, and it contains within it, of course, the different columns. So I think I want to use this code somewhere. And I'm just going to actually drop it in here. I'm going to create a variable called my list equals that. <coughs> and let's see whether or not, so when this JavaScript is executed, uh, well, it's executed when, when the page is loaded. Um, and so this variable should be part of the, uh, the rendering of the page. So let's see what happens here. Reload the page, and I'm going to look for my list. And it says here that my list is null. Well, um, that's obviously a problem because I was expecting it to actually be whatever the value is here. And and the problem is that the the page and the, the application gets rendered, uh, and various things happen throughout the the pipeline of rendering all the pages. Uh, and so what we actually have to do before we can actually grab this T body within the JavaScript, we have to wait until the whole application has been rendered. And so we need to use a little bit of JavaScript code uh, and jQuery code in order to do this. So I'm going to change this code here and basically add the following. And this is <clears throat> using sort of this jQuery style. It's, it's a mixture of object-based and, and uh, uh, an event based and essentially what's happening here is I'm going to say for the document whatever that document object is I'm going to wait until the page is ready <clears throat> and that means that it's been fully rendered and is ready for 
uh, events to be uh, manipulated or, or generated for it. So once the page has actually been fully rendered, I'm going to run this command or these commands. And what I want to do here is I want to say the following. So if whatever is that that tag that I just defined, which I, I called screenless, right? Um, Oops, uh, I need a quote here. Screens list. If the length, so if there is something within the object that contains this experience list, so it's this T body, um, if it has some length <clears throat> greater than zero, I'm going to run my, my list command. Actually, uh, let me call this something other than my list. My exp list. <coughs> so uh, I'm going to wait for the page to be rendered. I'm going to then look to see if I can find the experience list. And if I do find it, then I'm going to set this variable of my exp list equal to this. And actually, there's, uh, there's probably one more part of this that I want. Um, is if I, let's see, do I, I don't have my list yet defined. Um, that's, let's see, my list equals that. Actually, it should be var. My list equals that. And let's take a look at my list. This is the body. <clears throat> Uh, what I want to do instead of getting this the full part of the list, I just want to have the tr tags that are in there. So I'm going to do another variable. Let me just test this out. Um, my list test equals my list dot get elements by tag name, and I'm going to get everything that is a tr within this list. So now if I look at my list test. I've got <clears throat> a list of all the tags, the, the, the table rows that are um, in this. So I want to do basically this same thing in my JavaScript. So let me drop that here. Too many dots. So that I now have this experience list that is made up of all of those uh, all those particular tags. Okay, so um, now that I have that, um, I should be able to write this for loop. And I'm going to write for loop using, <clears throat> of course, JavaScript. This basically says that. Um, for each one of the elements in the list, for however long the list is, I'm going to set my list the um, event listener for when I click on the row. What I want to do is execute this. Uh, function that I'm going to call activate item that I'm defined down here. So function activate item. What this is just going to do is we're going to call an alert. <coughs> and I'm just going to say hello for now, just so that we see it running. Okay. So let's try this. We'll render the page. <clears throat> and actually, it seems to be running <clears throat> all three of those, but let me click on the rows. OK, I did something wrong here. Um, so we added an event. Oh, yeah. Don't need that. OK, now let me try it. Let me render this. So now when I click on the rows, 
and trust me, I'm clicking on the rows of each of these. Uh, each of these comes up. All right, so let's take a look at what we did here. Um, we added the myjs.js to the application.js. Again, that's contained within the JavaScript's assets app directory. Uh, we added a, an ID to the <clears throat> uh, to the body so that we're able to find this element. Uh, and then what we did was we waited until the document was fully rendered, and then we searched for that ex that list, uh, looked for the elements that are contained within it that are the the, the table rows, and then added this event a listener. Um, essentially whenever we click on the row, um, so that uh, this, uh, this function is executed. Okay, so in the next episode we'll, we'll do something a little more interesting than bringing up this, uh, this dialogue and, uh, uh, and actually display something that's, uh, that's more interesting. Okay, that concludes this.